So we all watched that Baltimore Ravens Kansas City Chiefs game and came away thinking, man, that was a good game, but the Baltimore Ravens could certainly improve in a lot of different areas. But one thing that we all collectively felt was that this has to get better. Now, depending on who you are, depending on where you're from, depending on how you look at the game, what your this could be could be completely different from my this. I could feel like, well, this is what they need to improve on. This is what they need to fix. You may feel like, well, this is something that they got to make happen. And this is something that, well, it's straight for now. But what better way to find out the correct this as far as what needs to get better than an expert in the field? I, I couldn't come up with this myself. So I had to bring on a very, very special guest to help us figure this out. So team, keep it clean. I am here with one of the best in the business, my guy, Coach Evan Sip to Tally. Um, he is the originator of Athlete. So shout out to my guy. Um, we before we get into things, he is a little less than maybe like 150 away from 10,000 subscribers. Let's just get him over the hump so we can get it over with. Let's get him to 10,000 subscribers. So team, keep it clean. I already know y'all gonna come through. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. The link is down below in the description. I'm gonna put it up for one of the cards so you won't have no excuses on missing it. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Follow him on Twitter. The link to that will be down below in the description. Coach, is there anywhere else where team, keep it clean can find you at? If they ain't already found you. Uh just those two. And I do have a second channel. It's called More Sip to Tally, but that's for 31 other teams. Whether you just want to mm -hmm. know just general football purposes, it's called More Sip to Tally. But the other, all the other ones is Sip to Tally. And on Twitter, it's Coach Evans 9. We got you, man. So we'll have all that linked down below in the description just to make it easy for everybody. So somebody that life was not made easy for was our guy, Lamar Jackson, in that Thursday night game against the Kansas City Chiefs. I almost said the Raiders, man. My mind is trying to get to week two, but I'm still focusing on week one. And one of the reasons why life wasn't easy for Lamar Jackson was because the offensive line, which is a brand new offensive line with some players playing in positions that they've never played in before. Um, and we knew that they were going to be some hiccups we knew there were going to be some rough moments and rough spots but after watching that game on thursday uh how would you grade the offensive line w what did you take from watching them play what were some negatives that you saw but what were some positives as well well as far as giving them an overall grade i would have to give them like a a, a low c or maybe a d i don't want to go f because there were some 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 bright spots and the bright spots mm -hmm. mainly come from ronnie and, and linda Baum. Um, mm -hmm. and oh, I'll just take it position by position. Left, go, left okay. tackle with, with, with Ronnie Stanley, promising, extremely promising to have a healthy Ronnie Stanley back. You were able to see him do some things that we were accustomed to seeing him do pre-injury. He can uh, mm -hmm. drop his anchor. He can. He has uh, ankle flexion where he can, you know, use his power to 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 fight guys off. You saw him get out in space and, and be. Uh, violent versus smaller guys in in space. When you go to left guard, you uh, which is Voorhees, you saw him lose some battles, but you expect that because this is technically his rookie year. But I also saw some mm -hmm. good some good battles with him, showing his strength that um, he has. Uh, when you go to center, we know what we got in, in Linderbaum. Um, oh, yeah. The only issue with Linderbaum is when you get those top tier guys and they get right on top of him, they tend to push him a little bit. But then his wrestling kicks in. And anytime he gets in a situation where somebody's trying to overpower him, that wrestling background comes in and he finds a way to twist, turn, and fight them guys off. Now we get mm -hmm. to the right side. That's what the grade, the, the group project on the left side, they, they doing their work. They, 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 they put the PowerPoint <laughs> together. They, they, they doing their job. They doing research. That right side of the group project, they just over there twiddling mm -hmm. their thumbs. They, they ain't participating <laughs> in the group project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right guard... <laughs> And like Chris was saying when we were talking yesterday, I don't mm -hmm. see the progression from when he got here as to now. Now, I understand. We're talking about Fall Lele. I understand that he's mm -hmm. in a new position. I just right. don't see where he's grown and gotten better. The same issues mm -hmm. he had when I scouted him and coming out of college are the same issues mm -hmm. he has now as a third or fourth year pro. And mm -hmm. then with uh, Makari, 
I like Macari, mm-hmm. but Macari's a legit six man. He, mm-hmm. he, I don't think he's. I wanted him to be a starter because he, you know, he's he's a veteran, but I just think he's he's a six man guy. And then Rosengarden, mm-hmm. I don't think he was ready for that spotlight yet. Like his first mm-hmm. snap in the NFL was head nose to nose with Chris Jones. Yeah, Chris Jones. Yeah, that wasn't fair. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a nightmare. But um, uh-huh. I, I do think there are some promising things about Rosengardner and Voorhees. I think it's going to mm-hmm. come with reps. And for them to open their career versus the defending champs in Arrowhead hey. with the ring ceremony, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. only go up from there. Now, with Farley, yeah, that's true. I really don't want, I can't, I can't really put him in that situation because he's been a pro for a couple of years, but he might mm-hmm. be in that same boat mentally as well. And I think reps will help them too. But it don't get any easier this week too because Christian Wilkins and Max is, is creeping right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of Falele, you said that you see some of the same traits uh, in him that you saw when you were scouting him. What are those? Slow feet. Slow feet mm-hmm. and inability to get out in space and, and dominate. Like there was one block, and I think it was on one of Derrick Henry's better runs where he was uh, matched up against Drew Tranquil. Drew Tran- Tranquil is a converted safety that's now kind of playing a linebacker-ish hybrid role. One-on-one, mm-hmm. he had the guy in great position and did not dominate. You're 6'8", mm-hmm. 380. Tranquil's maybe 6'1", maybe 220, 230. And y'all mm-hmm. sitting there, y'all ballroom dancing. You should dominate everybody that's not a defensive lineman. And he doesn't show the the strength or the meanness or the tenacity to take guys and just body slam. Mm. I need I need to see some kind of physicality from a guy that size. He he yeah. seems he seems to be and I don't want to use that word because he's that big and he may find me one day. He's extremely <laughs> nice. Uh. He's extremely nice to be a guy that that size, and I, I I need some, I need somebody with some dog in him. He doesn't seem to have that dog. He doesn't seem to have that dog in him. against mm. other NFL players. Against random people, he may have that, but against other NFL talent, he doesn't seem to have that dog. In him. Mm. So hey, hopefully this is the week where Falele could just get nasty with them Raiders, man. But we'll see what happens now. Um, with everything that you said about the offensive line, with everything that we watched, everything that you saw, especially as a coach, and everything that you analyzed and broke down, what would be your fix to the offensive line? Uh, whether short term or long term, how, how would you go about addressing the offensive line moving forward? Do you have like a particular lineup that you will go with? Would you do some different change? What, what, what would you do to fix this offensive line that right now it is a problem, even though, again, we knew going in it was going to be a problem, at least early on. Mm-hmm. But what would you do to, to help this thing work out? At this point, there aren't really guys you can bring in to fix it. So you really kind of got to go with what you got unless you're going to make a substitution. And I think the mm-hmm. only real substitution is being Cleveland. But even if you don't do that, I think the play calling has to help you out. And since you oh. don't have guys that can move people off the point, your run game has to be zone related because we don't have gap scheme guys. You got to have guys that can run inside and outside zone. So I think you need to put Derrick Henry either in the pistol or in the uh, under center, I mean, Lamar on the pistol on the center and run zone stuff and run your pass stuff off of it. We we saw a small sample of him doing stuff like that and likely was wide open. We saw the linebackers coming into the line of scrimmage to protect the run early in the game. And they had mm. big, huge gaps behind linebackers and in front of safeties where they could throw the ball. But then we got away from it. We went to more of the traditional spread stuff with the running back beside Lamar. And it just wasn't mm-hmm. as effective as, you know, the mm-hmm. threat of Derrick Henry running the ball. So you just got to run. I think you have to run more zone stuff and and maybe mix in some counter and stuff, too, because Henry had 13 carries or 14, whatever the carries was. But he had just yeah, 13 as many zone, zone carries as as gap carries. And I think he should have way many zone stuff because that's what he did in Tennessee. Tennessee was outside zone, inside zone and mm-hmm. not a lot of counter and, and, and power. And we don't need all that counting power because we don't even have the guys. Linda Bum is not a move people guy. Linda Bums get people on the move. And so Ro- mm. Rosengarden is not going to be a move people guy. Paul Lele is proving he can't move people. So the only person we got that can really move somebody is probably not playing. And that's being Cleveland. Maybe Voorhees. Mm. Now, a teaching moment real quick because he talked about gap 
versus zone. Explain the two, especially to anybody that may not fully understand exactly what those type of run schemes are. Okay. So gap plays, and they're pro they're normally labeled as counter and power. And there are a few more other ones out there, but the two main ones are, are counter and power. And they're called mm -hmm. gap because two or three of the linemen, and maybe even a fourth, and if you use a tight end, are probably going to block a, a gap down. So if you're running counter to the right, normally the center, the right guard, and the right tackle will block a gap down. So they're blocking whoever's in the gap to their left, where you have pullers coming from the other side over. And so that's why they're called gap plays. Whereas when you have zone plays, if it's inside zone, they're probably if it's an inside zone to the right, they're probably blocking, they're blocking a path. They're not necessarily blocking a person. And whoever shows up in that path, that's who they're mm, blocking. Okay. Outside zone okay. is just a little more parallel, and inside zone is a little bit more vertical. See, this this is why we bring people like you on so you could help teach. And you this wasn't rehearsed or nothing like that. I wasn't like, hey, coach, you're going to teach us gap versus zone. No, 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 no. This was on the spot. So, again, when you got people like this, people like coach, people like Sip to Tally, these are people you must subscribe to because when you watch his channel, I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. But you won't only enjoy it, you'll learn something as well. So, appreciate you uh, with that teaching moment for all of us. Now, um, yeah, speak, speaking of the offensive line, somebody who obviously was impacted by the offensive line, like we spoke about earlier, was Lamar Jackson. How do you think he played in that game? Because I have heard a lot of stuff from a lot of people uh, this past week, but how do you feel Lamar Jackson played in that game against the Chiefs? Exceptional. To me, he was, he was exceptional. And I know a lot of people want to clamor about the, the few missed throws right there at the end, but just think mm -hmm. about it. There were a lot of times when he snapped the ball and there was somebody in red in his face. If he doesn't make a lot of the plays he makes, not only do we lose the game, we probably get embarrassed. He, mm -hmm. he, he was making throws, running the ball. And, and we, a lot of us don't like it when he goes in Superman mode. But this Superman mode was necessary for us to even compete. Because mm -hmm. technically this was a preseason game for a lot of our guys. Because a lot of them guys didn't see any action. And he came right. out and went, he went postseason mode because he was doing everything in his power to, to will mm -hmm. us to win that game. Like the, mm -hmm. the play to, to Baton, the, the couple plays at the end. That mm -hmm. takes a lot of energy out of you. And for us, for him to just to play the likely, for him to keep us in the game the way he did with the running and the passing and the, right. the kicking at the line of scrimmage because more of the offense is on his plate now. Not only is he doing more physically, he's doing more mentally. So to me, those few little miss passes at the end, yet even though they were, you know, important, if not for Lamar, we get embarrassed mm. to open the season. So I think to me, if I had to put a grade on it, it's an A to me. And the only thing that would have made an A plus is hitting one of those two throws at the end to, to tie the game or even win the game. Mm. And yeah, we was literally inches away from tying the game. I mean, they could have possibly went for two. Uh, and won it. They could have possibly went for two and lost it, but it's one of them things we'll we'll never know. Um, something that we thought we might never know. Uh, they tried last year, but it obviously failed. Uh, was getting Derrick Henry. Um, they tried to trade for him, but the Titans at the last second they said no, no thanks. We ain't going through with it. So what did the Baltimore Ravens do? Well, they do something that they do a lot of times. Often when they try to get somebody one time and they don't succeed. They try again. And that obviously worked because Derrick Henry is a Baltimore Raven. How did you feel he did in his debut with the team? His debut, his debut didn't go as well as I thought it would go. But I don't think it was because of him. I think it was because mm -hmm. of the offensive line not, you know, being familiar with each other, not opening up the holes where they need to. Because I think he's different from some of the other free agents that were out there. Um, with with and I'm com I'm gonna compare him to Saquon, some of the other guys that were out there. You can mm -hmm. Saquon if you get penetration in the backfield, Saquon can make you miss and then go make something happen. Even Tony Pollard or some of them other guys, Derrick Henry needs the play to be blocked right first, and then once he get on second level, he can do that. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna Derrick Henry ain't gonna kind of you know give you that wop wop in the backfield and then mm -hmm. you know go get yarded. You he got to get a few steps going and then he turns into that that headache. And that's the difference mm -hmm. between him and some of those other guys that kind of went off the market first. So we mm -hmm. have to, the O-line have to give him, at least get him to the line of scrimmage and let him, you know, figure things out. 
then he can get going because they, you know, they get if the, the linebackers get penetration and, and get him behind the line of scrimmage, it's tough. Because when we had our good games against him, we were able to tackle him on the other side of the line of scrimmage. But if he gets to the line of scrimmage on the other side, he becomes a whole different problem. And that's what we have to do to get him on the other side of the line of scrimmage. That's why the guards have to play better. The guards mm-hmm. are the reason that Derrick Henry didn't have a great game and also the play call. Mm-hmm. I mentioned it earlier, that gap stuff, that's not where he's good at. He could mm-hmm. be good at it because, you know, how big he is and how, you know, efficient he is as a runner, but he's been running outside zone for forever. Let him run outside zone. Let one of them linebackers overplay it. Then he stick his foot in the ground and get a field. And then that's when he can put a safety in the shadow ring. Mm-hmm. Okay. And with Derrick Henry, Uh, You talked about once he gets to that second level, that's when he can really turn it on. Uh, And a big part of that is the opportunities that he's given. Um, John Harbaugh has some very, very interesting comments a couple of days ago about Derrick Henry. John Harbaugh mentioned that they ain't bring Derrick Henry in here to get like 30 carries per game. John Harbaugh also talked about how um, he just with this offense that they want to be able to get it from a lot of different people. He mentioned Zay Flowers, Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, and more. Uh, How how did you feel about John Harbaugh's comments on the King a couple days ago? So I do agree with him about getting it from a bunch of different people. Mm -hmm. What I I disagree with about him is if you didn't bring Derrick Henry, Henry in here to carry the load, at least let the running back position carry the load. So Derrick Henry don't get 30 snaps, fine. Let Derrick Henry get 18, just as he'll need eight, and whoever the other running back is need two. <laughs> don't put Lamar in, in that in that running back, you know, that carry situation. Because the, the more yeah. Lamar runs, the more chance that something's going to happen. We can win games without Derrick Henry. We can win games without Justice Hill. We can win games without Rashad Bateman. We can win games without Zay Flowers. We can win games without Mark, Mark Andrews. We can't win games without eight. Mm. And so even oh. if you're not going to mm. give Derrick Henry 30 carries, the running back position needs to have the, more carries than the quarterback. And I, I understand mm. he get, he get carries because of scrambles, but I think he still had just as many carries as, as the running back position, you know, without the scramble. I know he had like seven scrambles, but he still, that's, that's putting him around 10 carries and then they're here at 13. So that's, that's too close. Mm, mm, I feel you on that. Now, um, flipping it to the other side of the ball, it was somebody else's debut um, this well, last Thursday against the Chiefs, and that was new defensive coordinator Zach Orr, who took over for Mike McDonald, who had been Ravens defensive coordinator for the past two years. How did you feel Zach Orr performed against the NFL's best? I always say that, in my opinion, I feel like the, the greatest offenses um, in the NFL are Andy Reid's offense. And the, the, the greatest like schemers, the greatest coaches when it comes to offense is Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan. The reason I feel like that is because consistently we see year after year the way that they're able to put so many different people in position to be playmakers and to be weapons like we, we see it with the Chiefs all the time brand new first round pick and he was a first round pick but still Xavier Worthy uh, he hit us with the uh, the end around and then that that wide open touchdown catch too he was just a problem all night Rasheed Rice was just destroying us for the first three and a half quarters um, but then you look over to the 49ers the game against the Jets Christian McCaffrey ain't even play the running back, I forget his name. My apologies. It ain't no disrespect to him, but he I just picked him up too. <laughs> oh, you on fantasy? <laughs> well, he he went off. Like I, I didn't know anything about him. I'm sure 49ers fans and a lot of other people did too, but I didn't know anything about him. He w- goes, gets his first start, and, and goes crazy with it. So that's why I always say Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan, they are the best at what they do. But for Zach Orr going against Andy Reid, Super Bowl champion Andy Reid, three times. Uh, so all the success in the world has been happening over in Kansas City. For you to go against that in your very first game as defensive coordinator, that's a lot, man. That's a tough task. So how, how do you feel like he performed? I think Andy welcomed him to the NFL very cerebral. And, and I'll give you an example why. And, and I'm going to tell you who put me on this. Michael Crawford put me on this. So oh, I, 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 talked, I, talked with the, I talked a lot about personnel packages in the offseason. And Malik Harrison was a name I brought up a lot. And Malik mm. normally plays edge. Well, last year he played edge in our first down situations, like our run situations. 
And so what what Andy did to Malik and well to Zach, you know, we had a bunch of personnel packages, which is part of the reason why we burned those timeouts um, mm. in the second half because we had too many packages. Was so this part of the, the, the point? So he would get in heavy situations, which would force Malik on the field. And then we, you know, they ship out of it or put Malik in situations where he had to guard either a Pacheco or a Pacheco. Rice or something like yeah. that. And it was Malik rough. is not that guy. Right. So mm-hmm. Andy Reid played those mind games with Orr and his personnel packages mm-hmm. to get him, you know, that was his welcome to the league. And then at the point, they were like, get these personnel packages. Trent Sampson, you in, and <laughs> we ain't changing. <laughs> and so I think he did a good job of adjusting and then just settling it down. I think he just being excited. And then his first game, he had too much in it. And so once, you mm. know, he got that, you know, that, that punch from Andy Reid, he was like, okay, let me let me take a step back. Let me look and see what's going on. All right, let's do yeah. X, Y, Z, and let's figure it out. And they, they settle down and play better. Mm. And it's going to be a fill-out process for everybody. Right. And then, like you said, you set it up. Going against Andy Reid, it's tough. And, and whoever for the Ravens, <laughs> if that was their first game, or their first pace of action, or their first time coaching, that's a tough situation to be in. Tough mm-hmm. situation to be in. So. And then, uh, then on top of that, like there were the defense got put into some tough positions because there was a Lamar Jackson fumble. Mm-hmm. There was when the Ravens went forward on fourth down and didn't get it. There was a Justin Tucker to miss field goal. So that defense got put into some tough situations. Um, when you talked about just Andy Reid just setting it up to where Malik Harrison had to be in coverage. There was this one play design that they did, I think, either two or three times. It was three times at the max. But uh, Patrick Mahomes would be on the center, and Pacheco would initially be behind him, but then he would be like, they would, they, would, they would push him out a little bit to where he was not directly behind Patrick Mahomes. And he was like, not out wide, but he was moved off to the right uh, significantly. And Patrick Mahomes, there was one play where he still acted like he did like a, a, a play action, but Pacheco wasn't even near him. So it, it, they put, that ended up putting Malik Harrison out there one-on-one with him, and it was rough, man. It was rough. And the play worked like every time, even though one of the times I think Pacheco dropped it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that play, it just kept on working, and it just kept on setting Malik Harrison up bad. Uh, but, yeah, Malik Harrison, he, he got his role. He got what he does well. And then he got some other stuff that they should put some other people uh, in those positions instead of him. The overall outlook, though, coach, on these Baltimore Ravens, we know it's only been one week. Mm-hmm. So I know it may be tough, but what's your overall look at this Baltimore Ravens team? What do you see them being capable of? What do you think they may struggle with? How do you feel about these Baltimore Ravens right here, right now, moving forward? I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged with everything but right guard. Um, I think when you watched Wired, um, what was that, Went yesterday? The, yeah. the final moments of Wired, I agree with 100%. Like, walking off that field versus Kansas City, I don't fear them anymore. I feel like seeing them again, win or lose, I, I'm not scared of them anymore. I feel like our guys will be better. They'll be mm-hmm. um, more confident. The, the scheme will be better. The one-on-one matchups, uh, uh, well, not the individual matchups, whether it be Orr versus Reed or uh, or Munkin versus Spagnola or mm-hmm. the Mall versus their defense will, will be better. And I, I think that we'll be good once we figure out right goal, whether it's Lele getting better, whether it's being Cleveland, whether uh, whatever it is, going forward, I think we'll be better as the season go, goes on. And once we get Derrick Henry rolling and then right around November, the secret weapon comes back, which is going to change the offense completely. We'll we'll be good. And that secret weapon is keeping it. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, that hurt, man. Because that, man, that, that was our guy, man. Keith Mitchell was killing it. And you know what? For him, I, I'm glad. I'm very glad that the Baltimore Ravens did not trade for Derrick Henry last year because if they did, I mean, it could have still worked out better. Maybe in the AFC Championship, it would have looked, went a little bit different, maybe. But anyway, with Keaton Mitchell, had they traded for Derrick Henry, Keaton Mitchell would not be who we saw him to be last year, in my opinion, because he just simply wouldn't get the opportunity. Yep. Uh, because they would have had Derrick Henry here, which, I mean, it wouldn't have been a bad thing. But I don't think Keaton Mitchell would have got the chance that he got last season. But it is what it is. So it's going to be nice when he does come back. And that's a really, really good point you make about, oh man, <laughs> he, he don't need, but like, we, Derrick Henry get 18 touches, Keaton don't need but seven or eight. And he can hit you mm-hmm. for 70 or 80 yards. 
Yeah, he was crazy with it, man. He was crazy with it. Love Keith Mitchell, man. But coach, appreciate you. As always, thank you for coming through. Team Keep It Clean, I already know y'all got it. I already know y'all going to go subscribe to his channel. But if you were thinking about it, if you were on the fence about it, just go do it. Go show coach some love. Go show coach some support. Again, his channel, uh, Sip to Tally, and also more Sip to Tally, where he covers the whole entire NFL. You want the film breakdowns? You want to look at the All-22? You want a different perspective of your Baltimore Ravens or whatever other team you may root for? Hit up both his YouTube channels. Also, follow him on Twitter. The link to everything is down below in the description. Coach, any closing words before we get out of here? Hey, I appreciate Team Keep It Clean for always supporting me through this journey, man. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Appreciate you, appreciate your time. And y'all, again, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notifications on, and go show Coach some love.